Houston, we have a podcast. NASA TV, Facebook Live, Ustream, wherever you are watching, welcome to a very special episode of Houston, We Have a Podcast. So if you're unfamiliar with the podcast, this is where we bring in NASA experts, scientists, engineers, astronauts, all to tell you the coolest stuff about what's going on here at NASA. So today we have a very special episode. Uh, of course, you can see us on camera, and this is usually an audio podcast, but also we're going to be talking to space. Uh, this is not the first time we've done it. We've done it about two months ago with uh, Jack Fisher aboard the International Space Station. And we're going to do it again with some astronauts, except not with just one. We're going to do it with four astronauts. Uh, Randy Comrade Bresnik, Mark Sabo Van de Hei, uh, Joe Acaba, and uh, Paolo Nespoli. So I'm not going to do this alone, of course. Same as always, same as before. I have a co-host with me, NASA uh, Public Affairs Officer for the Astronaut Office, Megan Sumner. Megan, thanks for being here. Thanks. Happy to be here. Excited to talk to them. Awesome. So, I mean, Public Affairs Officer for the Astronaut Office, not the only role you've had here at NASA, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've previously actually managed our social media accounts here, the Johnson Space Center accounts and the International Space Station accounts. Um, and now I am working supporting the Astronaut Office for appearances that they go out and do and also the media support. Um, we have media come and talk to them before their missions and um, do interviews and media visits and things like that. Fantastic. And so that's I think that's the reason you're the perfect person to have as a co-host with me today is just because because first of all, you know the astronauts that we're talking to today. You've actually worked with some of them in the past, right? Yeah, so um, Joe and Mark, who we'll be talking to today, were actually the first two astronauts that I got to work with in this uh, cool. role as the pub public affairs officer for the astronaut office. Yep. So I'm really excited to get to actually talk to them in space. Awesome, but then also, you ran the social media accounts here at the Johnson Space Center for a while. So that's another part of this is we are on Facebook Live. So if you have any questions that you'd like to send up to the crew, uh, Megan is going to be monitoring those questions real time. She's got her phone right next to her, and we'll be asking some of those questions to, uh, to our four astronauts today. So the topic of today's conversation is astronaut photography. So what's that all about? Oh man, the astronauts take the most amazing pictures um, from the space station and it's just an amazing view that most of us will never get to see in our lifetime and thankfully they are willing to share that view with us through social media. Um, easily they can share it out to the whole world of what that's like um, and not only that but they're sharing with us what they're doing in space and a little glimpse into their life, um, the science they're doing, all the work they're doing on board. So it's so cool to be able to see that perspective. Absolutely. I'm very excited for this topic because it is one of that more the more visual things that we get to see of what the astronauts do on the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. Obviously they're doing science all the time and we have crew members that are constantly working various experiments and just recently they've been going out and doing a few spacewalks so they have maintenance tasks that they regularly do. Uh, but right now we're actually going to be talking about astronaut photography and actually right next to us we have some of the equipment that they practice on to actually practice for taking photos of the Earth. So it looks like our astronauts are actually getting set up here, uh, just like they do for any uh, public affairs uh, event. So we're going to be talking with Mission Control soon and getting that started. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them below. So. Yep, yep, we're taking your questions on Facebook Live. I'll be watching and asking the crew. So get your question in there and watch along so you can hear if they get a chance to answer it. Absolutely. All right, looks like our four astronauts are getting set up right now. Let's think. I mean, so we have, uh, we can talk about some of the extravehicular activities that they've been doing, some of the spacewalks as well. But uh, a little bit about our crew, Randy Bresnik and um, Joe Acaba and Paolo Nespoli have been there before for Mark Van Hei. This is his first space flight, so we'll get to talk to him about his experience being a newcomer. Actually, three of the astronauts we've talked to on the podcast before, uh, Randy Bresnik, Mark Van Hei, and Joe Acaba, all each individual episodes to share their experiences of what they've done aboard. Paolo Nespoli, this will be the first time talking with him, so that'll be a pleasure as well. And he shared some fantastic imagery of, uh, of Italy and mm -hmm. just different parts of the earth. Uh, so can't wait to see what we're doing there. So let's connect with Mission Control Houston and talk to our four astronauts. Again, send your questions below on Facebook Live. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we're ready for the event. JSCPAO, please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Gary Jordan and Megan Sumner in the Public Affairs Office. How do you hear us? Gary, we got you loud and clear. Megan, good afternoon to you, too. All right. 
Well, this is an absolute pleasure to be talking to all four of you today. I thought for sure I'd at least get to talk to one astronaut, but thank you so much for all four of you taking the time to talk to us today. So for I'm, a lot of you have been on the podcast already, so again, welcome back. But today we're going to be doing a live event, so we really wanted to bring in some questions from social media and hoping you can answer those real time. But to, just to start off, because there are four of you, if you can just sort of give a quick introduction uh, to all of you so our listeners kind of know who you are. Uh, we've got uh, Expedition 53 Space Station Commander Randy Bresnik. Expedition 5253 Flight Engineer Paolo Nespoli from the European Space Agency. And Expedition 53 and 54 Flight Engineer Joe Acaba. Expedition 53 and 54 Flight Engineer Mark Vandehei. Awesome. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for being with us today. So we'll start with uh, Comrade and Paolo. You guys have been up there the longest. So just how have the, how's the mission been going so far? What are some of the highlights? I mean, certainly uh, highs for us were uh, getting to work with uh, the previous crew and the Space Ninja, Peggy Whitson, uh, learning from them to be able to take over and, and run Space Station when we had our new crew show up for Expedition 53. Uh, we got to have a dragon come up here and bring a whole bunch of science that we got to work with for a whole month. Um, Certainly the past week has been really exciting because we've done two EVAs that have really returned the station back to good configuration with a robotic arm and some camera work and preparing stuff for robotic tasks in the future. So we've got a lot of stuff going on inside and going on outside. And so it's been a really exciting expedition so far. And we still are only about halfway through. Well, not much uh, to add to what uh, Camera there has already said. I mean, uh, we are doing a lot of activities here. It's always uh, crazy. Like you can wake up in the morning, start working with something and spin around and work with some science and then spin around again and, you know, work with the robotic arm. We have been doing uh, almost all of it uh, right now. We have, what, 200 more activity, 250, something like that. I mean, uh, and, and we are doing all of them. Fantastic. I mean, so today, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of different topics that we could talk about, but really wanted to focus on astronaut photography today because you guys have such a unique perspective of the Earth and you get some time sometimes to go and, and take photos of the Earth and maybe just kind of watch the Earth go by. So um, I guess since, um, <laughs> Comrade, you're holding the mic, if you want to share some some experiences from just looking out the window and just kind of what, what that feeling is like, what it's like to, to watch the Earth go by. I mean, it's really humbling because it's such a beautiful thing and there's so, so far been so few of us have had a chance to see it. And you don't look at the earth and, and come uh, not be changed. Uh, you certainly um, feel a part of the earth. You realize that every experience you've ever had, every person you've ever known is down on that little blue marble. And when you see the curve, your mind knows how big the earth is. And you realize that when you go around it in 90 minutes, you're back to you know essentially the, the same spot. And the fact that we can do that and see that, you just feel compelled to share it. Um, I'll hand the mic over to, to, to Sabo over here because he's only been up here you know about a month, but to get his impressions on what it went from you know seeing it for the first time to now translating that into photography to try and share that with others. The thing that impressed me the most when I first looked out the cupola to see the Earth was how close the recognizable features of the Earth seem to space. For example, um, seeing Italy, and at the same in the same view, seeing uh, the blackness of space, it makes it seem like everybody on the Earth is is really really close to space without ever realizing it. From our perspective. There's, there's just a thin layer of atmosphere that all of humanity is living in, and uh, outside of that is space. So it's, uh, it's impressive to me how close we really are all to what we see as outer space. Um, from a photography perspective, I think that's an important perspective for everybody to have. So my favorite thing to do is to try to capture those pictures that show both the space and places that we recognize and call home on the planet. Absolutely, and comrade, I know you've sh you've shared some just the perspective of the Earth compared to some other images, you know, being on the Earth too, and th those are an absolute pleasure to see. But I know we have some actual questions coming in from some some of our listeners right now. 
Yeah, <clears throat> that's amazing. I can't even imagine what it's like to actually see that view in person, but next best thing, of course, is to be able to see it through pictures and videos that you guys are taking, and uh, the whole world really appreciates that. We've got some awesome questions coming in. Lots of people are interested in um, photography photography in space and um, you guys on the space station. So Jace on Facebook wants to know, there are so many cameras on the space station. How do you decide which camera to use? And can you tell us a little bit about the equipment you do have up there? Uh, yes, so we do have, uh, for still photography, we essentially have a Nikon camera. Right now we have uh, uh, several uh, D4. Uh, each one of us gets his own, plus we have a couple uh, uh, placed uh, strategically. Some of them are dedicated for special photography, like uh, macro photography. We need to do a lot of macro photography for equipment here. Some uh, were just dedicated to, uh, you know, take... Uh, there was a micro, micro <laughs> shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> Try one with the, with the tele lens here. Some some like like this one, we really use uh, when we are pointing at uh, Earth, and we have some windows that have a special uh, uh, capability of letting us taking pictures uh, with this lens, and um, and then we have uh, we also have a red uh, dragon camera that we use for uh, cinematography. We have uh, video cameras. Uh, that are, allow us to take uh, HD photos. I mean, I, I would say that from a from a point of view of uh, cameras, lenses, uh, setup, well, we are all set here. We have everything that you can uh, imagine. Uh, it's just what is missing a little bit is the time because it takes time to to be there at the window. It's not that you just go there and you can take a picture and leave. If you want to have something that really makes sense, you need to have to be there and stay there and understand. Because it's a, it's a very quick changing environment here. You have to think that we are flying around Earth at about four miles per second, and, and things change really dramatically and really quickly. And not only that, you don't always pass over the same place uh, with the same conditions, actually almost never. So all the conditions change continuously. The sun, uh, the cloud coverage, uh, uh, the, the, the seasons, uh, I mean, the colors, the moon uh, uh, makes a lot of changes uh, during the night. So it's been a quite interesting uh, time here in trying to take all of this uh, armada of equipment that we have and try to make it uh, do what we want to do. Not always happens, but somebody will get uh, really great, great things. Yeah, Sometimes. sounds like there's a particular technique to take the absolute best pictures that you can. And from what you're saying, you have to be there for quite some time. And this is just something that I've always been interested in asking, but I'm sure the cupola is just a hot place to be on the space station to, to get those photos. So how do you share your time and who gets to, to see who gets to go in the cupola? <laughs> well, Paolo's the biggest, so he always gets the uh, first, he gets the first go. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of time in the day, but we're really busy. And so if somebody has an interest, they know something's coming up they want to see, they let us all know, and we respect that and let them have that space. Uh, but sometimes things might come up in the middle of the night. So, you know, it, it's at times where we're all in there because something is so cool and we all want to see it. And sometimes you're in there by yourself just enjoying it. And sometimes you don't take pictures. I'm not the greatest photographer, so I just enjoy going and looking out the window. Uh, but, you know, every now and then we wrestle for it, and but we make it work. All right. This one's for Joe, too. For you, I have to ask from Facebook. Jessica says, my first graders would like to know what your favorite part about space is. Joe was my middle school teacher, and now I'm a teacher. That's pretty cool. Wow, that's, that's very cool. Hello, Jessica. Glad that you're following us. Um, there are so many cool things about being in space. You know, one of them is, of course, floating around. These guys are cool, um, and, and the, relation, <laughs> the relationships that we form are really, really cool. Um, so I would say, you know, being able to do this and just kind of hang out in any direction you want, you kind of feel like a superhero, so that's pretty cool. Um, but again, looking back at the Earth is simply amazing. So Jessica, I hope your, uh, your first graders get inspired uh, to keep studying hard, studying the STEM fields, and hopefully they'll be doing more than we're doing today on the space station and maybe they'll be visiting other planets. So thanks a lot. 
Thanks, Joe. And I just have to mention that, you know, she mentioned in that comment that you are a, a former classroom teacher and you're up there following you. We'll have Ricky Arnold, who is also a former classroom teacher. And um, as part of that, we're really talking a lot about education and how it relates to the space station. Um, so you can go look up STEM on station and there's a website out there and educators can find a lot of cool resources there. Absolutely. All right, I got another question on Facebook. This is from Jace. Were you able to operate professional cameras before becoming astronauts, or did you learn about photography during training? Uh, I never touched a professional camera until I became an astronaut, and that's been one of the really neat opportunities about being an astronaut is the, uh, like the very fancy cameras, like the, the red camera that Pablo mentioned. It's a pretty impressive array of equipment and uh, great trainers to help us learn how to use them. Sabo, I mean, you've been up there, this is your first space flight, and you have a unique perspective being a first-time flyer, but especially I was watching you on your uh, spacewalk, and you got a couple moments to, uh, during the spacewalk, look down at the Earth. So can you sort of describe that experience? It's, it's hard to take it all in. It's so um, massive. It's everywhere. Um, the things that stuck out in my mind were seeing at night, seeing flashes of lightning that went on for about five minutes. Uh, the bright sunlight, it was very impressive. In fact, I re I'll never forget when, on the very first spacewalk, when Randy opened the hatch, um, the airlock just lit up because of all the reflected light coming from the Earth into the airlock. And the airlock's a very confined place. It doesn't have, it's well lit, but it's not lit like the sun and so it changed the feeling in the airlock dramatically when that hatch opened up and then it really felt real to me that's awesome all right another question colin on facebook wants to know if you guys take space selfies up there <laughs> maybe you got to take one on your spacewalk yeah i just uh, posted something uh, from our, our last spacewalk on tuesday with the uh, the space selfie and tried to you know explain it to people because you got these big inflated gloves on and you're trying to take this camera and it's like if you went to your oven uh, and grabbed your oven mitts and then grabbed your camera and tried to take the selfie that's what it's kind of like in the space you're trying to do that and line it up and feel for the button and get the shot so you end up trying to you know squeeze it a few times hopefully you see maybe the shutter actually took the picture and then you come back inside later on and go hey did i get anything hey uh so so paolo um we were we were kind of looking at some of your photos on twitter just the ones that you're you're sharing and um I, I see a lot of amazing pictures of italy but one that really stuck out in my mind was a picture of madagascar and the logging going on there just from the perspective that you see of the earth what sorts of ideas of human influence do you see from from 250 miles above the earth well, um, when you come up here and uh, you look out of the window and most of the time you see ocean and uh, clouds and then uh, sometimes you even have difficulties on seeing uh, the, uh, the, the actual ground, the, the continent. And then uh, little by little you start acquiring this acuity, you, you start seeing details and at the beginning the human presence is not so evident and then it becomes more and more and more evident up to the point then when you go there and it's night, you essentially see the planet lit up, or the continents lit up like, uh, like a Christmas tree. And, uh, and some of the places in Europe, in the United States, uh, uh, the presence of the human beings, it's, it's incredible. And, uh, and then you start focusing on other things, like you see rivers, you see uh, how these are shaped, uh, you see how, how things have changed, how uh, as human beings have tried to model nature according to our needs and not ourselves according to the needs of nature. So, so, and, and, and this change becomes really apparent there on that picture that you are referring to. Uh, you see essentially all the red uh, 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 dirt that is washing over on the ocean, not anymore uh, kept by the forest, by the plants, uh, by the plant there in Madagascar. And this is so evident. It's, it's really clear from from up here that we are a major force into this planet and we are changing uh, nature is that good is that bad i'm not sure about it uh we for sure we probably need to pay attention on what we are doing if we want to keep the environment as it is today or yesterday 
Um, similar to that, Natalie is asking if you've observed a change in color of the sunrises and sunsets due to the wildfires across North America, or maybe if you've been able to see any anything, any of the wildfires. We, we've seen uh, the wildfires that were going on in Oregon and Washington uh, last month. Um, unfortunately, the way our day cycle works, we're not going over California where a time where we're typically looking outside during uh, daylight. So none of us have really seen the, the Northern California wildfires that much yet. Um, you can see certainly the smoke obscures, you know, the look down, but I haven't seen any changes to the, uh, the overall atmosphere or the, or the color of the sun because it's just not that, many, uh, that much particulate when you're looking at it on a global scale. So, Comrade, kind of similar question. Um, recently, you know, again, we were looking at a lot of the photos that you're sharing on social media, but recently there have been quite a few hurricanes that have hit the um, United States, Puerto Rico, a lot of the Caribbean islands, and you shared your perspective of that view. Can you, I mean, the pictures can tell one story, but just from your perspective, what was it like seeing it from, from the space station? Yeah, you know, certainly uh, the... The formation of weather can be a you know, beautiful thing, and, and, and hurricanes have their own shape and, and do amazing things with the clouds. But it's when you realize the destructive power underneath it, it ceases being as beautiful. And certainly the first one for us was Hurricane Harvey that went right over our families and our homes and our friends and, you know, Mission Control down there in Houston. And so that was, you know, you say too close to home. Well, that was at home. So that was, you know, too close to home for us. And so... Then the parade of, of hurricanes after that was just disheartening because there were just so many and so many people affected and so much devastation that it, you know, we were taking pictures to hopefully help, uh, you know, the researchers that are using those to figure out how hurricanes form, how they, you know, continue to manifest themselves, what, what we can do to protect ourselves. And then it was taking pictures afterwards, high resolution photography, mapping the areas to show where there was flooding or, or you know, destruction that we didn't know about at that point because there still wasn't communication or, uh, or uh, camera crews were able to go out and picture stuff. So um, it was, you know, and an unfortunate project that we ended up doing, but hopefully the work we did up here, you know, translates into some science and we're able to translate into actual practical stuff that'll help people in the future. I would think it did. It's such a unique perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Seeing the hurricanes and the flooding and all of that from space is just um, really an um, outside perspective that you just can't see when you are right here next to it. So it's very interesting. And similar to that, Natalie wants to know if you could talk to us about the wharf rack. What types of photos do you take from there and how to use photography for science? Yeah, so we, uh, we have various projects that we'll do and actually the wharf rack is, uh, is right here beneath us. Uh, it's one of the, uh, the best windows that we have on the space station. It's very well protected, so very pristine and we can get some really cool photos. Um, Unfortunately, unfortunately for us, it's usually covered up, so we don't get an opportunity to use it too often. But there's a lot of science that goes on. Um, I know when I was here last time, we had the uh, Earth Cam project going on where uh, middle school children, uh, school children were taking photos and learning about those uh, different parts of the world. Um, we were also using it for agricultural purposes to map different things. So it's a, it's a multi-purpose window and it is just a very unique uh, perspective that you can get from here. And then you can put the cameras at different angles. You can uh, you know, do the different times of the year, different times of the day. So it has a lot of flexibility. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. There's also, I know we've done, there's an experiment that's been going on with uh, analyzing the spectrum of uh, meteors that are falling towards the Earth and uh, using diffraction gratings on, with the lens. So uh, there's some really interesting science that can come out of photography. So Sabo and, and Joe, both of you have been educators in, in the past, and uh, you, uh, Joe just uh, being a middle school teacher and, uh, and uh, Sabo, you know, with the, uh, at West Point. Uh, but is there, is there sort of an education perspective that you can you know, do from uh, sharing your view of the Earth or maybe some other experiments you're doing on board the station that you can use to share with others? Well, I think, you know, as an educator, one of the most important tools that you can have is sharing experiences and real life experiences. So as much as we can do that to help teachers that are out there and provide them more tools to do their job, um, you know, since we've been here, it's been nonstop. It's kind of like the beginning of the school year where you're kind of getting on your feet, getting the ball rolling. But then we had Dragon and then we had two spacewalks already. So, you know, to be honest with you, you know, that's the kind of experience that we want to share 
And hopefully by doing that and by recording that, whether it's with photos, um, video, we can share that experiences with teachers who can then share that with their students. That's awesome. It's so interesting to so many of us down here. So we appreciate being able to hear about the awesome work you guys are doing. Um, I have to mention, Comrade, I'm getting a lot of comments on Facebook about your shirt. People really <laughs> love it. So <laughs> I had to tell you that. <laughs> Joseph wants to know um, what's the most amazing photo you took. So does anybody have a favorite picture yet so far? Um, it's, um, it's easy, relatively easy up here to do time lapses, which means a lot of photos, uh, and they can go good or totally bad. I mean, I've done thousand pictures completely wasted. Uh, thank God it's not film anymore and, uh, you know, electrons don't cost too much. Um, but I got a uh, couple of time lapses, uh, pretty good. The one that I think uh, was probably the best uh, is one of the Aurora. Uh, in the north, so it was uh, Aurora Borealis, and uh, I can, I don't know that night what happened, but the spikes of the Aurora, the colors toward the ground, and the shadows went all the way down under us, and this was, to me, was incredible, all that sequence of pictures. And I think, uh, you know, Paolo mentioned earlier about the earth is ever changing. For me to pick out one after just the few months we've been here is, is impossible. It's, it's every day there's, you know, one or two that go, wow, that was just so amazing. I'm so fortunate to be able to see that. And that's a lot of the stuff that we're, we're trying to post to share with you guys just because every day is full of amazing pictures. And my, my folder of amazing pictures from space is keeps growing, you know, daily. I'd say uh, my favorite photo so far is uh, one of, frankly, Italy and the Alps uh, that we happened, I think Comrade drew my attention to it, got me to look down during the spacewalk and I snapped a couple pictures. Um, the camera did a lot of great work for me because all I could really do in that situation was press the button and uh, the pictures turned out great. Uh, really um, brightly lit uh, Japanese module of the space station in the foreground and uh, Italy and the Alps in the background. Yeah, and if I can just add, um, probably one of my favorites was taken uh, just a few minutes ago, and Comrade and I had a, a conference that was scheduled with some of uh, our flight directors looking at the upcoming uh, spacewalk, and I asked him, hey, where are we right now? He's like, oh, I think that's, you know, South America. And I said, well, is Puerto Rico going to be coming up? And he's like, wow, there it is right there. So, you know, we grabbed cameras right away, and it was just, it was a beautiful day. Um, I know people are still recovering over in Puerto Rico, so they can see how beautiful their island looks from up here, but it was pretty cool to take that today. I know the people in Puerto Rico will be really, really anxious to see that. All right, so we've got a couple of questions um, about the exposure times on your cameras. Can you guys talk a little bit about that? You know, typically for daytime Earth OBS, we're shooting uh, a lot of times shutter priority and we're shooting for one over the focal length. So if you got a 400 millimeter lens like this big monster, you're shooting, you know, one over 400 um, and letting the, uh, the camera take care of the, the aperture. Um, nighttime is certainly different. Depends on whether or not we got moon or we don't. Uh, at that point, we're setting up the uh, cameras on arms so that we're not jiggling them, you know, like, like a tripod on the ground. And we're shooting anywhere from, you know, second to two second up to even, you know, Paolo was shooting this week a tenth of a second because it was so bright with the moon over the ground. So you kind of adjust for the conditions um, to be able to get the shots, you know, on the time of day. Great, thanks. All right, Jessica is saying, hi from Chicago. Can you recall a time where you saw something from up there that was impossible to be captured on camera or something that just doesn't do justice on camera that you wish to share? It's uh, it's really interesting because uh, you never know what you're going to get. And actually, you never know what you're going to see to start with. Or more or less, you can predict, but the condition changes so drastically that, that you know, you can you can wait for, for the whole day for a pass over Italy, for example, just to discover that it's completely covered by clouds. You don't even see where it is. Uh, or the opposite. Or you're doing something. You're there doing exercise. We have the cupola right there where we're doing exercise. You're there doing a set of something. And suddenly, you know, an island appears out of the blue and has incredible colors. Um, <laughs> I just lost the question. What was the question? 
Ah, yes. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of things that, that cannot be, I mean, the camera cannot translate and, and because, because it's very difficult to see the light. Uh, for example, I find it very difficult to, to, to sh take picture uh, when the sun goes down because there is this huge bright uh, sun there and you're trying to capture something else and you cannot do it. So when there is this, in space there are huge contrasts between the full day and the full night. There is nothing in the middle there and it's very difficult to transition. For example, when we do a night time lapses and we, we set up the camera for night, as soon as we get the sun, just a little bit of sun out, it's totally washed out. And I would love, for example, to show this transition as we see it with the eye that adjusts continuously this transition from night to day this is a this is something that i still haven't figured out a way to do it maybe we'll we'll we'll, we'll think about it and we'll work on it <laughs> well comrade uh that that kind of makes me think of uh i know very soon i think on october 23rd you want to do a sort of around the world in 90 minutes and then kind of share your perspective of a of a great pass over a lot of uh, populated cities and, and, and various features of the Earth. Can you talk about what, what your plans are for that, what you're going to do over those 90 minutes? Well, it, it's not just a, a me. It's just going to be, end up being a crew project. And the, the, the thought was is to show everybody on the ground what it's like and, and, and the features that capture our attention during each minute of those 90 minutes of one revolution of the Earth, whether it's day or night. And ideally, hopefully people are engaged and then they can then add to the, the project and the conversation what was going on on the ground at that moment themselves and create this kind of, you know, moment in time where we circle the globe and what was the world doing at that moment. And so we'll be trying to take those pictures. I think we haven't quite settled on a date yet, um, but yes, it'll be after we finish our, our last EVAs and uh, something that we hope is a, you know, a global project that'll include, you know, most of the world's population that we can get in, in a single pass and uh, really show off, so showcase one revolution of our planet. Can't wait to see what you have planned for that. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for, for taking the time to come on the podcast today and share your perspective of Earth. It's just so unique. Literally no one else on this planet has that perspective. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. Um, and I know this is the end of the day for you too. So again, I, I appreciate all four of you participating in this. So just want to wish you the best of luck on the rest of your mission and uh, Godspeed. Can't wait till you, get, till you guys get home. Thank you very much, Gary. We'll look forward to the next time we get to talk to you. And ready, break. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants from JSCPAO Station. We are now resuming operational audio communication. Ah, oh, fantastic. How about that, Megan? Four, that was amazing. Four astronauts. We got to sh see their perspective of, of the planet. And uh, I know we were throwing some images. Those were actual images that they took uh, yeah. f while they were actually, you know, some of the still photography that the camera they actually showed while they were up there. But then some of those time lapses that Paolo mm -hmm. was talking about, too. Absolutely just such a unique perspective. Yeah, it's so cool to talk to them and to um, hear a little bit about their experience. And, um, of course, you could see all those pictures on their social media sites and just amazing pictures they've taken. Yeah, let's go through them. So who can we follow on the station? All right, so all four of those guys we just talked to are all on Twitter, so you can follow them all on Twitter. Comrade is at Astro Comrade. Um, Joe is at Astro Acaba. Sabo is at Astro underscore Sabo. Um, Paulo is Astro underscore Paulo. And you can follow all the astronauts at NASA underscore astronauts. Um, and also Comrade and um, Paulo are also on Instagram. So if you like Instagram, you can look them up on Instagram and see all their pictures. That's right. Yeah. And we try to, uh, we try to kind of consolidate that into that astronauts account too. So mm -hmm. you can just see everyone's pictures. And they are some amazing photos. Again, these photos that we're sharing with you were actually, a lot of them were actually shared on their Twitter account. So you can follow along on that journey. Uh, and I know that each of them have a couple months left. So, so there's plenty of, plenty of images to see over these next couple months. If you have a question about astronauts, not photography or anything NASA related, just go on your favorite social media network and use the hashtag AskNASA. If you want to ask us specifically a question on Houston, we have a podcast, just mention us in that Ask NASA question. HWAP, I think, is the one we like to use for HWAP, just so you can limit on those characters, especially for Twitter. But if you're not following uh, Houston, we have a podcast already. Shameless plug, I'd say go and subscribe on whatever podcast uh, avenue that you listen to. I know we're on iTunes, SoundCloud, and NASA.gov. We just recently got on Google Play, so whatever. 
uh, uh, this medium you like to listen to your podcast at. So I think that'll do it for us here. Again, if you have any questions, use the hashtag NASA and make sure, be sure to subscribe to Houston. We have a podcast and we'll see you next time. Hopefully the next time we're on camera talking to space. I yeah. hope so. So subscribe to Houston. We have a podcast. We'll see you next time. Houston, go ahead. Stop of the space shuttle. Roger, zero Subscribe for more space. space, 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 space.